On this week's special edition of Rambler Sports Locker, RSL reporter Lucas Kim gives us his take on the highly anticipated film, The Loyola Project. Also, we have updates on the 2022 Winter Olympic Games in Beijing. All this and more coming up next. Happy Valentine's Day and welcome back to another lovely episode of the Rambler Sports Locker. I'm Nate Keogh. And I'm Tori Van Arsdale. Recently, the NFL's playoff games have kept fans on the edge of their seat. This includes multiple games going into overtime, or the game's outcome coming down to the last few seconds of play. Some fans have speculated that in the end, these nail-biting games have seemed to be unfair. To spread the love and tell us more on the league's overtime rules is RSL reporter Gabby Luma. Over the last few weeks, games in the NFL have been keeping fans on their toes until the last seconds and especially in overtime. Two games that have really sent fans spiraling were the AFC Divisional Round and the AFC Championship. The Kansas City Chiefs hosted the Buffalo Bills in Kansas City for the AFC Divisional Round game that sent the Chiefs to the AFC Championship for the fourth year in a row. The game was an epic battle of two AFC rivals and went into overtime after the Chiefs kicked a field goal to tie the game within the last 13 seconds. What made fans, especially the Bills, upset was that the Bills never touched the ball in overtime after the Chiefs won the coin toss. The overarching question of how is it fair was being asked over the next few days. In the AFC Championship, the Chiefs hosted the Cincinnati Bengals but lost after an another overtime battle. This time, the Chiefs won the toss, got the ball, and weren't able to score. In true Bengals fashion, they kicked a field goal to clinch their Super Bowl berth. As Chiefs fans mourned the loss, the overtime rules came back into question. The current NFL overtime rules for the postseason state that there's a two-minute break after regulation ends, followed by a coin toss. Overtime periods are 15 minutes long during the postseason. As always, the visiting team calls heads or tails to determine the possession. Whoever wins the toss gets the possession of the ball first. If that team scores a touchdown on their first drive, they win the game. If not, the opposing team gets possession, and if they score, they win. In the postseason, it seems unfair that the team who wins the toss basically seals their win when, it get, when it's out of anyone's control. Understandably, the postseason rules are different because games can't end in a tie, but both teams deserve the chance to possess the ball in overtime. Even though games can't end in a tie in the postseason, both teams should still have the chance to score. It's unfair to give a strong offense the chance to score against a weak defense and vice versa. Even if a team has a rock-solid defensive line, their offense should still get a chance to score as well. Fans are not the only ones sounding off on the rule change. Some teams agree that the rules should be changed as well. After losing to the Patriots in overtime in the 2018 AFC Championship, the Chiefs proposed an overtime rule change to the NFL. The proposal stated that both teams should possess the ball in overtime. Though the proposal was shot down, the message is still clear that people want the rule changed. It should be. For the Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Gabby Luma. Thanks, Gabby. Here at RSL, we love a good Cinderella story. And this past week, a film about the 1963 Loyola men's basketball team entitled The Loyola Project was released. Their national championship victory in the wake of the civil rights movement with a racially integrated roster is nothing short of an incredible tale worth telling. Here to give us his take on the film is RSL reporter Lucas Kim. This past Monday, a brand new documentary titled The Loyola Project was released on the CBS Sports Network by director Patrick Creedon. The Loyola Project follows the 1963 championship Loyola Chicago men's basketball team. It showcases how the Ramblers captured the championship while also breaking racial barriers. Their success in basketball came at the height of the civil rights movement during the 1960s. The documentary is narrated by Lucas Williamson, Loyola's fifth year graduate student who was one of few Loyola players to score over a thousand points as a Rambler. The documentary began production in the wake of the 2020 George Floyd riots. Williamson and Creedon find the film personal since they both share the experience of growing up in Chicago. Williamson describes the Loyola Project, a success story that all people should know about. The story of the 63 Ramblers has significance in the college basketball world and American history. Creedon released the documentary in February in celebration of Black History Month. The documentary is set to tour at 63 different colleges around the country and is available for streaming on Paramount Plus coming soon. For the Rambler Sports Locker, I'm RSL reporter Lucas Kim. Thanks, Lucas. The world's most beloved football tradition is around the corner 
and that's none other than the Super Bowl. The Cincinnati Bengals take on the Los Angeles Rams for the championship this Sunday the 13th. The Rams are currently favored to win, but the Bengals have turned their season around, and they're not done just yet. With more information regarding both teams' journey to the Super Bowl is RSL reporter Amelia Vilhauer. Calling all sports fans, the time has come for the event of the season, the one, the only, Super Bowl. This Sunday, we'll be seeing the Los Angeles Rams and Cincinnati Bengals in an ultimate showdown at SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles. This game will be a big one for the Bengals, considering they haven't been to the Super Bowl since their tragic loss to the San Francisco 49ers in 1988. In two years, the Bengals went from being one of the worst playing teams in the NFL with a 2-14 and season to entering the postseason as the number four seed after winning the AFC North with a 10-7 and record. From there, they defeated the Kansas City Chiefs in the AFC Championship game, ultimately giving them their first chance in 33 years to play in a Super Bowl. Many believe bringing in Zach Taylor as head coach in 2019 and drafting Joe Burrow as quarterback in 2020 were the changes that led to the Bengals improving. As for the Rams, they last played the Super Bowl in 2018 and lost to the New England Patriots. Since then, they've traded quarterback Jared Goff for quarterback Matthew Stafford and have signed wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr. and outside linebacker Vaughn Miller. They ended their regular season with a 12-5 record and now have the chance to win the Super Bowl at their home stadium, which was done for the first time last year by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Good luck to the Rams and the Bengals this weekend and to the fans for the battles in grocery stores to find the perfect Super Bowl snacks. I'm RSL reporter Amelia Vilhauer. Thanks, Amelia. The 2022 Winter Olympic Games have kicked off in Beijing on February 4th and have been quite the treat so far. This international sporting event only happens every four years, but it always seems to bring our world together in love for sport. To give us all the important updates and details on the games is RSL reporter Andrea Baroni. The 2022 Winter Olympics started February 4th. Since then, Team USA has secured 10 medals, four gold, one being by Julia Jacobellis in women's snowboarding cross. At age 36, she is the oldest Olympian to win gold in this category the second being won by Chloe Kim in the women's halfpipe. The third gold was taken by Nathan Chen, Chen being the first American man in the singles figure skating competition since 2010. Lastly, Ashley Caldwell and Justin Schoenfeld got the gold in mixed freestyle skiing. The five silver medals won were kicked off in slope style snowboarding by Julia Marino and freestyle skiing by Jalen Koff. Team USA secured its first ever silver medal in the figure skating team event, just narrowly beating China 65 to 63 points for that medal. Closing off the silver medals for now is Ryan Cochran Siegel in alpine skiing, following in his mother's footsteps who won the gold back in 1972. Wrapping up our medal count is Jessie Diggins, becoming the first American woman to win an Olympic medal in an individual cross country skiing event with her bronze. At this point, Team USA is ranked fourth place overall. For Rambo Sports Locker, I'm Andrea Baroni. Thank you, Andrea. That's all for this week's edition of the Rambler Sports Locker. To stay up to date on all things Rambler Sports, be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at LoyalRSL. For all of us here at Rambler Sports Locker, we wish you a very happy Valentine's Day. I'm Nate Keo. And I'm Tori Van Arsdale. And don't forget to turn out the lights.